So next thing we'll do is we'll go into our move. Uh, I have this previously, previously created. The thing that we have to do is populate our features. So in 3DCS, our object part is the part that's going to be moving. In this case, it's going to be our power button. And our target part is the part that the object is moving to. In this case, it is the button plate here. So what we do in the move is we establish what features will be locating these parts together. In this case, we're going to be using a step plane move which follows the 3 2 one scheme <coughs> of three points defining a plane, two points defining a secondary uh, direction of control, and a six point defining the tertiary direction of control. So for our objects, I'm going to pick my first point here, my second point, my third point. That will establish my primary plane, and then I want my hole here to be a four-way, and this hole to be a two-way, and then because I'm using this as a four-way, we're going to select it again for the tertiary. So that defines the locating features on our objects. We just need to select the corresponding features on our targets. So let's select all targets and pick the points on the plate here. So this first point, second point, and third point for the primary plane this pin and this pin together establish that secondary plane or secondary direction of control and this pin again the four-way which will then control our tertiary direction so we Mike, should can I ask a question sure if you didn't have points on those pins you could just pick the physical feature as well right correct so these points were previously created um, alternatively if you're choosing to not use points, you can always use features. So if instead of that point, we want to select that surface, we could do so as well. So the software is both point-based or feature-based, yeah. depending on what you choose to use. Yeah. So I'm going to stick with using these points just to be consistent with the uh, object four and six. And then I'm just going to show my features here. So the software then will highlight my objects 1, 2, and 3, 4, and 6, and 5. And then my targets 1, 2, and 3, object targets 4 and 6, and target 5. As well as defining the features that we want to use to locate, we want to define the directions that those control. The software will try and interpret based off of the location of the points, what directions should be controlled. In this case, the direction one, it shows as associated, which is using the vector of these targets. In this case, it's an X. Direction two, with auto, it's going to infer between these two points that the direction to control is Z. And then for direction three, again, auto, based off of the first two directions, the tertiary direction needs to be Y. So if we show our directions, we can see our primary plane is this direction here. Secondary is this direction. And tertiary is this direction. And then also based off of the uh, object points that we selected, the software will infer what parts we want to move. In this case, we're moving the power button and that will uh, fully complete our move. In addition, because we have hole and pin combinations for this move, the clearance between the pin and the hole sizes will be an additional source of variation for our model. So we want to model that variation as well. And the software allows you to control how that variation is modeled. So we can either uh, use the default, which is constant, so we're always going to be moving the hole to the pin, so there's always contact around the edges. We could also uh, set that to have some clearance uh, when these two parts are mated. As well as the magnitude, we can control the angle 
which is the direction that the contact will occur in. Default is uniform in 360, meaning equal probability in any direction. If we wanted to include stuff like bias due to either gravity or some force acting on this part when it's being placed on this button plate, we can change the distribution of the angle to then bias the power button to a certain direction. So with those points added to the move, we can nominal build, and then we'll see that our power button is now moving into its correct location in the phone. And then as I mentioned earlier, the order of your moves will mimic your assembly process. So if we animate through our moves, we can see how the uh, phone would be assembled as it's being produced.